I'm here. And you'll never leave me. Never. Promise. Promise. How can I be certain? Because the two shall become one. wonderful life you've given me, Clark. What a wonderful life we've made together. that this season's crop be bountiful. We thank you for this nourishment before us. Bless it to our bodies. And bless this day. Amen. Amen. Hey, where's Missy? I thank you again and again for the honor you've done me in your proposals. But to accept them is absolutely impossible. And my feelings in every respect forbid it. Uh, can I speak any plainer? And he don't like standing around all day with nothing to do. How do you know he don't like standing around? Charlie. Yeah! Hey! That was Nancy! <gasps> On Charlie! I believe it was. Page 25. <clears throat> Just making sure the teacher made it here safely. Well, here I am, safe and sound. <clears throat> I would appreciate it, though, if you made sure that Arnie and Aaron got here on time. It's disruptive to the rest of the class when they enter late. Well, I think they're going to be here on time from now on. You have a very nice day. Miss Davis. All right, Daniel. Yes, ma'am. You don't know. Oh. How you doing, Zig? Getting by. I just took the boys to school. We're late again. <laughs> I tell you, though, I wish they'd stay young forever. How old's that boy yours now? He'll be 10 on his next birthday. And the younger one? 
Arnie? He's seven. Well, he's got it in his head, though, that one of these days he and Aaron are going to swap places, and he's going to be the older brother. Yeah, well, boys sure are full of big ideas. Yeah. <clears throat> Any word from your boy? Hmm. Well, like you said, uh, boys are full of big ideas. Do me a favor, Claire. I'm just not hungry today, but I don't mind lunch to go to waste. Maybe you'd eat it for me? i like to help you, Miss Davis. Thank you, Claire. I'll be stepping out for a few minutes. Charlotte will be in charge while I'm gone, and she'll report to me the names of anyone breaking any class rules in my absence. Anyone. a break for lunch. I'll be back. You're the boss. All right, that's lunch. Is this a private lunch or can anyone dine here? I hope I didn't startle you. No. I'm Grant Thomas. Missy Davis. Well, Missy Davis, I have surveyed hundreds of miles of land west of the Mississippi, but today is the first time I've ever seen anything as pretty as you in the viewfinder of my transit. We're just picking berries. Not a very substantial midday meal, if you don't mind my saying so. Did you say you have a transit? Yes, it's a device used to measure the... Horizontal and vertical angles of the land. That's right. And you have one close by? Would you like to see? Would you like to look? Mm-hmm. Allow me. Thank you. It's amazing. What are you all doing here? Follow me. We work for the Continental Railroad Company. It's our job to survey the lines to find the best and shortest routes for the men who laid the tracks. Mm -hmm. That's a Vignet Solar Compass. It shows us which direction is true north. I've read about equipment like this. I know you said you're not hungry, but maybe you'd consider joining me for lunch. I'm sorry, I really have to go. I'm late. Late? Thanks. Are you sure you have to go? I'm afraid so. But it was nice to meet you. And good luck with all your work here. Murphy, get off this door. I'm giving you one last chance. Fine. 
in. Have it your way. I'm leaving and coming back with your pa. I'm sorry. I assure you it isn't my desire to startle you every time we meet. <laughs> no, it's fine. I was just about to go in and teach a class. I'm the teacher. I don't mean to hold you up, but you left this. Thank you. I understand now why you couldn't accept my invitation for lunch. So, maybe you'll accept my next invitation to dine with me for lunch? A week from Saturday? It's not a school day. Unless you have a steady bow. Uh, no. No, you won't dine with me? No, I mean, no, I don't have a steady bow. Oh. Yes, I would be delighted to dine with you. Wonderful. I hear the hotel dining room has the best food in town. I can arrange for transportation. Oh, no, that's all right. I'll meet you there. Around noon? Noon would be perfect. Better get back to my class. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. And this handsome and mysterious stranger rides up on this mighty steed and sweeps me off my feet. Percy Davis, you're making that up. I'm not. It really happened. His name is Grant Thomas and he works for the railroad. On the crew? Yes, but, I mean, he's different from the other men. I mean, he, he was well-dressed and, and self-assured and they treat him like he was the boss. And he even had his own tent filled with food. Looks like you're imagining a little more than just food. He invited me to dine with him at the hotel. He said dine? Yes. What'd you say? I said yes. When you get older. But that's what you said about the plowing. Well, that's right. You're going to be a big help with the plowing someday. But I want to help now. You are helping me. But I want to do important work. A man's work. There's all kinds of work, son. There's a, a boy's work. There's a man's work. And there's God's work. It's all important. So feeding the chickens is important? Yep. And cleaning the pig's pen? Oh, you bet. Um, Pa, I gotta go. Go ahead. Be right back, Pa. Be right back to help. Okay. Take off your belt. 
I need to take off your belt and wrap it around my leg. Come on. There you go. Ooh. What do I do again, Paul? Right, right above my knee. Okay. Paul, help me. I don't know what to do. It's not your fault. I'll stop for now. No moving around, Clark. Uh-uh. Let me get that wound chance to heal. For how long? At least a few weeks. Maybe more. That's a serious injury. Gash goes clear to the bone. I'll see you out. Thanks, Doc. How's Paul? He's resting. Thank you for coming so quickly. Now, it takes me a better part of a month to do my rounds, but I'll, I'll be back to check on him then. I'll make sure he stays med. Infection? That's your biggest worry now. A bad infection could lead to gangrene. He could lose his leg. Or worse. Right as rain. You can't 
can't work the fields, Clark. I have to. If we don't get a good crop this year, we're gonna lose everything. I know. That's why Missy and I will do it. You can't. We will. What is it? What's wrong? I'm just redressing the wound. Can you hand me that canister of yeast?
Elm Bark and Yeast. This should make it all better. And if it doesn't? You. You're the man that helped bring my pa home. How is he? He's alive. How did you happen upon him? I was out checking my traps. What do you think you're doing? I thought I might had a turn at the plow. Why are you helping me? Wait a minute, what's your name? Nate. I thought maybe we'd met before. I don't think so. Got uh, Anders and Malone working on the next quarter mile like you asked. Well, I'm glad someone is where they're supposed to be. Now, I know it's none of my business, boss, but... Maybe the lady had a good reason for standing you up. So you've handled a plow before? Yep. Are you from around here? Here and there. Just passing through. Do you always ask so many questions? Just wondering on your work experience. Because it seems to me you should be spacing the rows a little closer together. Because the more rows you plow, the more seeds I can plant and the bigger the harvest is. Can I tell you how to braid your hair? Don't tell me how to plow a field. No, I want you to get it. No, Mama. I'm not leaving Pa. Pa will be all right. We're here to see to that right now. I'm not you going. As I no. Aaron. No. Go and get fresh water. I'm not leaving him. Please. Hand me that chair. Let me in. Oh, 
What didn't you want him to hear? We're gonna have to open that wound and burn it clean. It's the only way to get rid of the infection. I thought the Elmberg would help draw it out. He could lose his leg. Or his life if you let the infection get worse. No, you're not touching my paw. <laughs> Have you ever done this sort of thing before? I've been a ranch hand for years. I've seen a lot of mishaps. So I've taken care of my share of accidents. Mom, can we just wait for Doc? The Doc won't be around for another three weeks. What do you need? Take my knife and clean with whatever you got. Brandy or iodine. I'm gonna need some hot coals and a fry pan. It'd be best if you take your brothers out of earshot. He's even hungry. He's asking for my fried chicken. <laughs> Make sure you thank him and invite him for supper tonight. I will. Mate! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thank you for everything. I was glad I was there. Especially wouldn't want your brother watching his Paula die and then living a life wondering what he could have done different. Well, I hope you like fried chicken. That's what we're having for supper. Nate, come on in. We're having a picnic. We made you a plate. Pa's leg is getting better, Nate. And I'll be right here to make sure you have everything you need, Pa. Like if you need water, or biscuits, or someone to get you a piece of ham. 
or your Bible. How about you get me some help with the chores? Pawn needs me. All right, you two. Let's say the blessing so we can eat this fine meal that your mama has prepared. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed on this family, my family, and to Nate, our very own miracle, who has reopened our eyes to your enduring promise. Amen. Amen. Eat up. All right. Marty tells me that you've done more work in that field today than she and Missy have been able to do all week. Well, it wasn't my first time behind the plow. You got your own piece of land? Uh, no. I, no land yet. Just plans. You never despise meager beginnings. Got some wheat? And corn needs to get in the ground the next couple of weeks. I'll pay you a fair price as soon as the crop comes in. But Missy here, she's young and able, and I'm sure she'd be happy to help you with the planting. I'll be out there, son of. All right. You better watch out, he might get ya! <laughs> what I won't give for a handful of quiet. <laughs> Do a swan! Do a bear! He has a big mouth. Better watch out, he might get ya! <laughs> Two bits. Well, actually, I'm not here for a haircut. Oh. Well, I just need a little information. Information's two bits. I'm looking for a young woman, uh, Missy Davis. I can tell you just where to find the Davis place. I'd be most appreciative. One head back out of town, go south from the post office. You get two big oak trees. Head west. Head west. You can't miss it. Thank you very much. Sometimes when I'm outside like this, Surrounded by all this beauty, it feels like I'm walking through one of God's paintings. It feeds my soul. Speaking of God, what did your poem mean by his enduring promise? That someday he'll wipe away all our tears. That all pain and suffering and heartache will be gone. And that evening when we were all together, feeling joyful that Pa wasn't in pain. You helped give us a glimpse of that promise. We have plenty of wood back at the cabin. Not a sturdy piece of oak like this one. What's it for? None of your beeswax. Are you all right? mess with bees. I've done this plenty of times. Smoke puts them to sleep. We'll surprise your mama with some honey. Ouch! Hey, ouch! 
Ouch. <laughs> What's the matter? One of the bees not sleepy? What about the honey for mama? I'd uh, stop talking and start running if I were you. Smoke puts him to sleep. That's always worked before. Well, throwing a rock at him didn't help either. No. Oh no. What is it? My locket. It's gone. It can't be gone. Missy. My mama gave it to me. I can't believe it. Someone you know? Someone I never thought I'd see again. Good afternoon, Missy. Good afternoon, Grant. Ah, I was worried when you didn't show up at the restaurant. It took every bit of my surveying equipment to find you. <laughs> Actually, I hope you don't mind, but I took the liberty of asking around in town. I had planned to be there. Uh, my pa had an accident and was quite ill. Is he all right? He's still recovering, but I think the worst is behind him. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, this is Nate. He's been working for my pa since his accident. This is Grant Thomas. We had a mishap with some bees. A mess. A beautiful mess, if you don't mind my saying so. <laughs> well, would you like to meet my folks? And my pa might be sleeping, but... Well, I don't want to disturb them with this unannounced visit. But if it's all right, I'd like to come back and do things the right and proper way. Things? Yes. I'd like to ask his permission to court his daughter, if that's all right with you. Yes. That would be fine with me. And I'll look forward to my next conversation with him when he's feeling up to it. It's nice to meet you, Nate. I'll see you soon. All right, John. Mama sent me to get you. She's got supper ready. Oh, I'm not real hungry. But thank her for me anyway. All right. Well, I could bring you something for later. No. But you, uh, you can do something for me. Give this to your Paul. He's gonna need it to get around. A sturdy piece of oak. 
I know how much you'll appreciate it. Night. I just wanted to thank you for making this fancy cane for me. It's mighty thoughtful of you. Uh, I know what a chore can be to get around at first. You had some experience with a bum leg yourself? My paw. Needed a cane for months. Best if I get the horses brushed and fed. All right, then. How was your walk? Well, it felt good to get out for a while, thanks to you. I went back to that spot in the woods where I had my accident. Woods are nice and green this time of year. Yep. Feller could get lost in those trees if he wanted to. Willie. How long have you known? Boy does a lot of growing and changing in his teen years. When you told me about your Paul's leg, well, that kind of confirmed it for me. My middle name's Nathan. Nate. Been using it for years. Because I thought if I changed my name, I could change my past. Hmm. How's that working out for you, son? Most days, it seems like the past is breathing down my neck, reminding me I'm Willie. Even in a room full of folks who call me Nate. Well, your family had a lot to deal with. And it must have been awful hard. But a tragedy happens. A real family pulls together. They mind ripped apart. My ma, she grieved herself crazy and she went back east. My pa, he just quit. So I left home six years ago. I imagine you got your reasons for coming back now. I got some things that need to be said. Then I came close to going home, and I couldn't face my pa. Not after I left like I did. And then you found Aaron and me. Yes, you did. I saw your pa today, son. I don't know what happened between you two. I do know you're never going to step out of the shadow of your past until you see him. Did you, did you tell him about me? That's not up to me. 
brother doesn't even want to see me. I saw a man with a face full of regret. Seeing you, talking to you. That might help him put his past to rest. I suppose you think I'm a coward for running the way I did? The way a man grieves, that's a personal thing. But I do know there are times when a man can be driven to take a trip in search of answers. And if that man doesn't find the answer he's looking for? Most often we're not looking for answers. We're in need of comfort. And for me, the only trip worth taking that's when I kneel to pray. All the comfort I could ever ask for is right there. In God. You'll be fine, son. What's your business here? Parts me, Willie. I guess you would be old enough to have whiskers by now. Yes, sir. some coffee. You want a cup? Coffee would be good. Maybe I'll fix some eggs. I found your parents to be very gracious about our lunch together, Missy. Back east, young women must often be accompanied by a chaperone. Mothers and sisters are too busy with the tasks of the day to spend time chaperoning. If you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Thomas, the entire town is very happy that your family's bringing the railroad right past our doors. Glad to hear we have the support of the community. <laughs> oh, um, the cook is preparing that special chicken dish that you requested. Uh, well, whenever you're ready for your first course, just signal me. Good. I thought you were a surveyor. I am. When your family owns the business, it's only smart to know every aspect of it. I hope you find everything to your satisfaction, Missy. Oh, everything's so lovely. The table linens, the crystal, the beautiful lagus in China. You know the pattern? Her Majesty's filigree. See the scroll designs along the rim? Give it elegance. And the raised accents make it unique. I spend an exorbitant amount of time reading. I believe that's our lunch. Sorry, sir. Excuse me. Here you go, sir. <laughs> Thank you. A connoisseur of knowledge and a chicken wrangler. <laughs> the advantage of being raised in the West and educated by a woman from the East. Um. My mother died when I was just a child, and my father ended up marrying a woman from the East. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so 
clumsy. Oh, no, no, not at all. Missy, no, Missy. No, I know they're expensive. I can pay them back. Missy, Missy, the, the crystal is mine. As are the plates. They are easily replaced. Sit. They're yours? I wanted the table to be perfect, so I had my man John bring them over this morning. Now, don't worry another moment about it. I have 20 more crystal glasses just like that one at home. 20 more? Yes. And I would happily let you crack each and every one if you'll dine with me 20 more times. Well, maybe next time we'll have to have a picnic instead. You can leave all your crystal at home. I'm already planning the menu. It's potatoes with scrambled eggs. Just like you always used to have. Well, that wasn't me. That was Matt. Maddie. Hate to waste good food. Well, you know, Paul, I could probably eat some of this. Just don't do me any favors, Willie, all right? I mean, it ain't gonna break my heart if you don't eat the eggs. Really, Pa, I could eat some of that. Well, you can eat nothing now. Six years since I've seen or heard from you, I guess I'm entitled to forget a few things. Oh, Pa. I'm sorry, I left like I did. Well, at least your Ma had the guts to tell me to my face she was leaving. You know what happened to her? No. I, then I guess you're a lot like your mama. Oh, I'm here now. I came back to set things right. Hope you could. What could I do? I could pretend that none of this ever happened. I'm not asking you to pretend nothing, Paul. I'm asking you to forgive me. You want me to forgive you? <laughs> Maybe you should forget you still have a son. sound like a fictional hero from one of your novels. Gran is educated and handsome, attentive. He's traveled all over for his job and seen places I've only read about. Just remember that God has written his own story for you. And it's not the feelings of your heart that it should be based upon, but rather the thoughts of your heart that you need to hear. That inner voice that tells you that this man will care for you no matter what. That he'll still want to kiss you when you're old and gray. Tend to you when you're sick. Honor you. And if the thoughts of my heart say yes, he is the one? Then you should trust your instincts. And pledge your heart to him because a man like that is as rare as a diamond in the rough. Like Pa. Yes. Like your paw. Aaron said he saw you packing up your horse. You plan on going somewhere? Took your advice. Saw my paw. I figured that's where you were. According to him, I ruined his life. I'm sorry. That didn't work out the way you hoped, Willie. I really thought your father was ready to make amends with you. He'll never be ready to do that. He'll never forgive me. You're his son. Not anymore. 
You want to talk about it? Talking about it don't change anything. Sometimes just talking it through, it'll help you see things in a whole different light. There ain't no light in the world that make this better. Can't hurt to try. Unless you're afraid. I used to set traps for Paul. Natty was always after me to let him come along. I didn't want him to, I just figured he'd slow me down. I didn't want him to. I just figured he'd get in the way. I had a way about him. He just had to get Ma and Paul to let him have his way. When are we gonna set the first trap, Willie? And find the right place. When are we gonna eat the food Mama sent? We get hungry. How do you know when it's the right time for the traps? Can't you hush up for just two seconds? I can't concentrate with you yammering on and on. I don't know how I lost track of the day. I guess I was just so intent on getting those traps. So that's what Paul would know what a good trapper I really was. Thinking back, I don't know how I couldn't see how tired and worried Maddie was. I'm cold and it's getting dark. Don't you think we better head back? Got one more trap to set. Mama's gonna be worried. Hush. Gotta make this last trap count. Pause the pen on me. It was like a curtain dropped over the sun. One minute I could see where I was going, and the next minute, it got so dark I couldn't make out the right way to go. I'm so sorry, Maddie. I should have listened to you. There's no way I can get us home in the dark. May. Maybe Paul will come find us. Maybe. More than likely, we just have to wait out at night. Just at home at first light. I'm awful cold, Willie. Yeah. Stay close to me. It'll I'll keep you warm. Thanks, Willie. Thanks, Willie. Kid is shivering and shaking in the cold, and he says, thanks. Then what happened? Did, did he, uh... You know, I was right. Talking about it doesn't change anything. Time was about done. And this time I moved on. I did what I came for. Did you? Came home. Saw my paw. Are you sure that's who you really needed to face? You should be on my way. The doors will always be open to you, Willie. And our prayers will be with you.
I didn't want it to happen. You slipped away and I didn't even know. You were so brave and I didn't even get to tell you. I'm sorry, Manny. To you. Thank you. Grant? I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> it's just like a real home. It is my home. The tent goes up wherever I am. I don't see any purpose in depriving myself of the comforts I've become accustomed to. You travel with all these books? Books? Music? Honor me with a dance. You're an excellent partner. Thank you. My father taught me. You see, I'm not generally a man who thinks much past the next site I'm working, but... Since we've met, I found myself daydreaming about a future with you. What do you see for us in your dreams? Uh, I see us traveling and exploring together. Midnight picnics under a canopy of the brightest stars. Or dining in the finest hotels. A life brimming with anything and everything you could ever want. That life sounds like a fairy tale. That life could be ours. You would never have to turn a spade in soil again or, or toilet planting your own food. And if I did have to plant and plow, oh, do you see yourself right there beside me? You're missing my point. I wouldn't have to be there because no wife of mine would ever struggle if even for an hour in a field. I'm a very wealthy man. What's wrong? I just always thought my first kiss should be for the man I marry. Then marry me. Missy, you don't want to say no to a man who's offering to save you from a life of adversity. I'm saying no to a man who doesn't think adversity is something to get through together. It's just not real, Grant. I'll tell you what's real. You've just given up the chance of a lifetime. I can have any heart I want. Until now. 
I'm sorry, Grant. I'll get someone to take you home. God bless you. Nate. Actually, I'm Willie Nathan LaHaye. Willie LaHaye. You were the boy that stole my hair ribbons and dipped my braids in ink. And then when your brother... And then you were gone. <clears throat> so why didn't you tell me who you were? I've been Nate for years, the strangers. Guess I wasn't ready to be Willie again. And, until now. Well, you don't look like anything I remember. Oh, I, I was just a boy when I left. Been a while. People change. They do. Well, how about your... Your pa, have you seen him? I've seen him. But he's not ready to see me. Well, you know, I wanted to thank you for all you did for my family. But you, you left without saying goodbye. I had some thinking to do, some things to get right. I am grateful to you and your family for helping me put down a burden that I've been carrying for a long time. <clears throat> Actually, I'm, I'm headed further west. You've got land to farm? No, not yet. When I do claim my land, it'll be for raising cattle, not crops. <laughs> I've worked on a couple cattle ranches, and it's what suits me. Thing is, I came by today because I didn't want to make the same mistake. I wanted to see you, and uh, and give these back to you. My ribbons. <laughs> you kept them all these years. Probably seems silly to you. No, not silly. It's sweet. Well, anyway, that's what I came for. To give you those and... Bye. Bye. Never despise meager beginnings. Wait. Willie. Willie. I was just wondering, if, um, are cattle ranchers tied to the seasons the same way farmers are? No, not in the same way, I suppose. So it wouldn't make a difference if you leave now or leave later? I guess not. After all the work you did plowing and planting our fields, it would be a shame for you to miss the harvest and not collect your pay. And I make really good cornbread pudding once the sweet corn's shucked. <laughs> I bet that fellow Grant Thomas would really like that. Yes, I bet he will. 
If he finds someone to make it for him. It won't be me. I guess I could postpone my trip long enough to be here for the harvest. Good. Big Earl. Big Earl, he didn't... <laughs> <laughs> Dear Father, we thank you for this harvest, for your faith in us, and for the time we spend together. Amen. Amen. Working hard? Trying to. Davis, will you marry me? I'd send word as soon as you're settled. I will. I 
can walk as much as you can. It's better than riding. I know how much we love you. I know it's not so far, but send word once you're settled. I'll take good care of her. I know you will. You take good care of both of you. Ever since you were just a little baby, I knew this moment would come. I always had an independent spirit. Huh? My heart's breaking. Mine too. Can you fix it? Not this time, little one. Not this time. Your husband's waiting on you. Thank you. Cheers.